Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Miss School. Today, I am bringing you a 10.2 guide for normal arena Miss Weaver. So that's twos and threes. You're going to learn everything from stats to hitting rotation to everything you're going to need to know about how to be successful as Miss Weavers in arena. We're going to start at the beginning with races. Starting with Horde, we have two options. You can go Orc or you can go Undead. Orc is good because you have hardiness, which reduces stuns on you, and then you also get Blood Fury, which increases your stats. Both really good, but I don't think the stun reduction is that strong especially since teams don't really target you outside of very few comps and then you have undead which has will of the forsaken and what that does is it removes charms fears and sleep effects on you so evoker sleepwalk warlock fears priest fears any fear warrior fear so anything like that you could use it to get out of it's basically a second trinket for stuff like that and i think it's way more valuable than hardiness from work so if you're going to play horde and you're trying to min max your races i would definitely recommend going undead Alliance has a few more options depending on what's good. So the first one is Dwarf and Dark Iron Dwarf. What these do is they have the ability to remove curses, bleeds on you, magical effects. So I would recommend going Dark Iron Dwarf or Dwarf if Feral is good, Affliction Warlock is good, Assassination Rogue is good. Anything like that that has bleeds or like multiple magical effects, I think both of them are really, really solid. There's also Night Elf, which has Shadow Melt, which makes it so you can pretty much avoid a CC on you. It also allows you to Shadow Melt Drink. So if we have mana issues, you can Life Cocoon somebody, Shadow Melt Drink, and then you shouldn't have mana issues or you shouldn't, you know, run out of mana. I think it's a really good ability. The possibilities for Shadow Melt are endless. You could use it to avoid CC, so if someone's casting CC on you, you could just Shadow Melt and avoid it. You could, if t teams are targeting you, Shadow Melt like, gives you drops them from targeting you, which is fantastic. So Shadow Melt is really, really good for Monk. And then there's Gnome, which is what I play. So Gnome is really good pretty much versus anything with spamble slows or if you fist weave a lot or versus boomies because they have root beam. So really good versus mages, really good versus death knights, wind walkers. Boomies, obviously, I, I, anything with the slow, I think it's solid. So and you also get a more, uh, higher mana pool with Gnome. So if you're trying to min-max that, it's also solid. The reason why Human isn't good is because this patch, they made it so Trinket is a minute and a half cooldown. So you don't get a lot of value out of the will to survive that humans have, which is a little unfortunate. Hopefully they update it to something a little bit better. But Human, kind of just the value from will to survive is just not good anymore. So I would go Night Elf or Gnome for Alliance. Next up are stats, and I would recommend going Mastery versus Haste Crit. You do want like 15 to like 17% Haste. The reason for that is because it reduces the GCD on your Soothing Mist, which is what you're pretty much going to be using the cast. And it also makes your hot stronger. So that's what I would recommend. I think it's really good. But then after, after you get that Haste, you want as much Mastery as you can. Next, there are embellishments. There are a few new embellishments in 10.2. The one embellishment that I would highly recommend playing no matter what is Precog. So this makes it so when you juke a kick, you are not able to be kicked, CC'd, or anything like that for four seconds, which is amazing, especially for Cast Mist Weaver. All of our spells are casted. So we need, we desperately need that four seconds to recover. It's fantastic. Now, there's another embellishment that was added, and this one was added in 10.2. And what it does is when you heal, you have a chance to give your teammates versatility. There's also another one that gives stats. I would recommend maybe versatility. Um, it helps with survivability and damage output. So I would go with that. And as far as the slot that it goes on, I put one on boots and one on the ring. Both are really good places to put it. I also have the blue silken lining for the mastery. So if you have a good amount of haste and you don't have enough mastery, Blue Silken Lining is also a really good option for an embellishment. This will give you mastery when you're above 90% health, which is fantastic. You don't get a lot of value out of it if teams are hitting you, but if teams don't hit you, then you're fine. As far as tier set goes, you're going to want the two and four piece tier set. They're both really, really strong. The two set makes it so when you use your Nuring Mist, your target gets a 50% healing buff from you, which is crazy. This is nerfed by 50% PvP, so it's 25%, but still insane. And then our four set makes it so any healing you do to the target that has Chi Harmony on them, 20% of that healing is stored. And then once it expires, it'll like bloom and heal everybody that has your Nuring Mist on them. Essentially, what you want to do is keep your Nuring Mist on your teammates as much as possible that's it i would say put you know, the tier set on helm shoulders chest and gloves the legs have mastery but crit is just really bad but the gloves right here have versatility on it i believe i 
so does this one. A ton of verse. So I don't think you can drop the helm or the gloves because the verse is too good. You have haste verse on the chest. So if you want to, maybe you could drop the shoulders, but the, then it has haste. And haste is really, really good because we're trying to get to that haste break point. So I think we're going to drop the legs just because you kind of want the verse mastery from the legs from the uh, conquest vendor. I have an import string for the talents below. So if you're wondering what I'm playing, this is what I play nearly every single game it's just the 2v2 slash 3v3 import on the left hand side for monk talents nothing really changes from game to game the one thing that i would change if i were you is i do put two points into fast feet i use this for killing totems against shaman so i think it's really good to just get some damage help kill a totem and then just move on and wait for the shaman to use another totem and then you kill it but you don't need two points in fast fit you can put these two points anywhere you want you can put two into grace of the crane to increase all healing taken by eight percent you can put one to the strength of spirit and like one over here both are fine both work it's it's cool whichever way you want uh, i just like prefer the extra damage to help my teammates one point into strength the spirit actually wouldn't be terrible just because they just recently changed it. So expel harm does a little bit more healing. But besides that, I don't change any other talent in this tree over here. On the right hand side, there's there's really not much I change either. So obviously you start with getting your belt mist, getting life cocoon. You're gonna get your restoral. You're gonna get your overflowing mist. It's nice that you don't need uplifted spirits anymore because you could just go at healing elixir. And it's the new healing elixir. I'm not a big fan of it. But um, you're going to get Manatee, of course. Manatee is like very, very important. And then in the bottom half of the tree, I don't change anything. So you're going to be going with Cloud of Focus, which is recently got nerfed. But it's the bread and butter of basically cast the healing rotation. Uh, and I'll explain about it in the rotation. And then you need your Focus Thunder as well. And then you have Peaceful Mending, which makes it so whenever you, you're Soothing Missing them, a target, that target takes 50% more healing from your Enveloped Mist and Renewing Mist, which is just crazy good. And then you get Tier of Mourning, which makes it so you vivify through your Renewing Mist, heals for more, and has a chance to spread. And then there's Resplendent Mist, which makes it so your Mastery has a 30% chance to do 100% more healing. With Tier of Serenity, which makes it so your Thunder Focus T gives you more Empowered Spells. It's kind of random, but still all of them are really good. It's either Enveloped Mist, Renewing Mist, or Vivify, which is fantastic. And I use Mending Proliferation because it's really good for when multiple targets are taking damage. Because it's, kind of, it's kind of a big weakness for Gas and Miss Weaver. And yeah, this is the talent tree I run. There really isn't much I change. If you have any questions, please let me know. One of the biggest downfalls of Miss Weaver is how good some of our PvP talents are. So for Cast and Miss Weaver, Zen Focus T is almost pretty much mandatory against anything with multiple range kicks. So if you're playing against like Mage Lock, I have two multiple range kicks. I would probably really play Zen Focus T because you fall so far behind. When you get kicked, especially against teams with multiple crowd control spells, like if you get spam CC'd and then come out of CC and then get kicked, it's it's just a rough time. You also have Peace Weaver, which interacts with Restoro. So if you're stunned and you heal somebody with Restoro, Peace Weaver still works, so it makes you immune to CC, which is amazing. And then the third one, it's really up to you. You have Eminence, which I would use to avoid CC. Good versus Hunters, Rogues, anything that requires a stun into a CC, Eminence is, is amazing. You also have Disarm. So Disarm I use pretty much every time versus Warrior teams, versus Rhett teams, anything like that. Anything with a melee that kind of does, has high uptime. Grapple Weapon's really good against Marks Hunters as well. And then you also have Zen Sphere. So Zen Sphere, Sphere of Hope makes it so you do 15% more healing to your target and then you put on the enemy and it makes it so they... They take 10% more damage from your teammates and do 10% less damage to you. So some pretty popular comps. Let's just say Ret Warrior. You're going to probably play Eminence, Peace Weaver, and Disarm just because you need Eminence in case they try to go you. And if you don't play Eminence teams, they will try to go you. Peace Weaver is good because they hodge into CC on you as well. And if you don't have Eminence, you can just Peace Weaver the damage. And then Disarm for the Warrior. Uh, versus R something like RMP, it's actually... It Kind of exactly the same. You could drop Disarm for Zen Focus T. That's kind of up to you. I kind of they only have one range kick, so I just play Zen Focus T. Versus a caster comp like what is it? Uh, Mage Lock I use for as an example. Zen Focus T is really good. Peace Weaver is really good. And then this last one, it's kind of up to you. They can't really kill you, so I go Zen Spheres. Really, really strong. I also sometimes swap to Revival if there's no stun setup, and I don't think Mage Lock has one. Obviously, if they're playing with like an um, a holy priest there's a chance that they're playing the stun so you could play restoral to maybe immune cc but for the most part they don't have stun so you just play normal revival always play normal revival versus affliction warlocks as well because you want to be able to dispel magical effects that's the main, main difference between these two revival can dispel magical effects 
can't be used while stunned. Restore can't dispel magical effects, but can be used while stunned. So the biggest change or the biggest way that I use revival is versus affliction warlocks. That's pretty much it. And in RGs. That's that's pretty much it. Every other game I'm using Restore. Some important talents to keep in mind when you're healing at Mist Weaver. Rapid Diffusion, when you use Rising Sun Kick or Enveloping Mist, you apply Renewing Mist to somebody within 40 yards. This it works with our two set. So if you envelop Mist somebody and you put Renewing Mist on them, they're also going to get the Chi Harmony buff. So keep that in mind. But the bread and butter comes down to Cloud of Focus. Whenever you use Envelop Mist or Vivify, you get a stack of Cloud of Focus. Each stack makes it so it increases the healing by 15% and reduces the mana cost by 15%. Stacks up to two times. So if I am healing and I am Velping Mist, I get a stack of Cloud of Focus. And then I Vivify, I get another stack, which is amazing. Another really important talent to keep in mind is Invigorating Mist. This did get buffed recently this makes it so when you vivify somebody anybody that has renewing mist on them also gets healed so if i put renewing mist on this one and i put renewing mist over here and i start healing this target everybody everybody's getting healed by my vivify so that's very important for maximizing your cleave healing as well you have really good single target healing and you got to take advantage of the invigorating mist that way you can heal everybody and not just focus on one person at a time Next up, we have our rotation. You want to start by putting your statue down. It did get buffed recently, which is fantastic. I think it was a buff by like 40%. So that's really, really good. And then you're, all you're going to start off with is putting your Renewing Mist on your teammates. That's pretty much it. Again, Renewing Mist is really, really important hot that in that Mist Weavers have. So you put that out. You're going to heal with your Vivify, which is you could use it. You pretty much use it for any amount of healing. You always want to go to your Vivify. You build up stacks of Cloud of Focus. And if your teammate starts to die, so let's just say your teammate is below like 50% health, you can go for like a Vivify into an Envelop Mist. That way you get the mana reduction and you get the healing bonus from your Cloud of Focus. And that's those are the three buttons you're going to be using for healing your teammates. There really isn't much else to it. Obviously, you want to weave in your Zen Sphere Globals to be able to get 15% more healing on your teammates. 15% is massive and it stacks with your two set. So if you just keep your Renewing Mist active and keep Chi Harmony on your teammates as well as Zen Sphere, you're going to be, you're, I don't think there's any damage you're going to be able to not out heal. Like there, you're just going to be able to do so much healing. Now that you know the bare minimum basics with your Zen Sphere, Renewing Mist, Vivify, and Velvet Mist, you want to start weaving in your Thunder Focus T. So what Thunder Focus T does is it empowers two spells and it's two spells because you're playing Focus Thunder. And then it'll also empower two more spells because you're playing T of Serenity. This one's random, but you can still empower spells. And those empowered spells do different things. So if you use Envelopment Mist with Thunder Focus T, it'll do an instant heal and makes Envelopment Mist instant. So you don't need to channel Soothing Mist to make Envelopment Mist instant. You can just Thunder Focus T and Envelopment Mist. Outside of that, it's casted, which is very, very unfortunate. With Renewing Mist, the duration is increased by 10 seconds. So I believe it goes from, what, a 20-second hot to a 30-second hot. Vivify makes it it makes it so it costs no mana, which is very important. With Rising Sun Kick, the cooldown is reduced by nine seconds, and then Essence Font channels 100% faster. Don't worry about those last two. What you're primarily going to be using your Thunder Focus T on is Enveloping Mist and Vivify, mostly Vivify, and I'll show you why. So keep in mind, Cloud of Focus, two stacks. Whenever you use Vivify or Enveloping Mist, you get a stack of it. So what that means is if you so look at my mana bars at 100%. If you Thunder Focus T Vivify, Vivify, 100% mana. And I have two stacks of Cloud of Focus because Vivify costs no mana. I use it twice, and then you just use that two second stack on Enveloping Mist. So hopefully that makes sense. That's pretty much what you're going to be using it for 99% of the time, or at least that's what you want to do. You always want to go for Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus, Team, Vivify, Vivify. There are going to be times where you're going to want to use Thunder Focus, Team, Enveloping Mist, and that's going to be when you're in like a desperate situation and there's kicks available. So, for example, if you're playing against Mage Lock, two range kicks, Sometimes, most of the time they play with the Resto Shaman. So they have Wind Shear, which is three kicks. What you're going to want to do if there's kicks available is you want to put your Zen Sphere up, you want to use your Renewing Mist, and then you want to Instant Vivify, which is from this talent right here, Vivacious Vivification. And then, yeah, you can Thunder Focus, Team, Enveloping Mist. It's going to happen. There's times where you're going to have to use it. It's not the most ideal situation, but sometimes that is what it is. It also works really well with uh, Zen Focus T. So if you there are kicks available, but you don't, you know, you could go for Zen Focus T because you would use it while channeling Soothing Mist. And then you can just use your Thunder Focus T and Belt Mist. Either way works, whatever keeps your team alive. But just keep in mind that you're going to have to, you, you are going to run out of mana really quickly if you spend your, all your Thunder Focus Ts on instant Belt Mists. One of the 
trickiest things about Mistweaver or cast a Mistweaver is that you you have to cast all your spells. You have to. So juking is mandatory. Juking is when you try to fake the interrupts that other teams have. So normally what I do is I'll go for Soothing Mist, go for an Invoke Mist, and I'll try to I'll just fake it. And then I'll just try to weave in some Instant Vivifies. Boom, Instant Vivify. Try to go for an Invoke Mist. Keep trying to juke it over and over again. And then just keep healing from there. And now let's put it all together. We put our statue down. We put our Zen Sphere on our teammate taking damage. Let's just say they're just... You could also just hard cast Soothing Mist, by the way. Like, don't be afraid to just sit here and heal with Soothing Mist. It's perfectly fine to do that. But you want to put your Doing Mist on your teammates, and especially yourself, too. Very, very important. That way you get the Vivify healing. Got our Doing Mist out. We're going to just Vivify because our teammate's taking a little bit of damage. Let's just say they start using their Burst cooldowns. What you're going to want to do is Thunder Focus E Vivify. Vivify into an Envelop Mist. And let's just say there's kicks available, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to Soothing Mist, Zen Focus T, and just start spamming our Vivifies and Envelop Mist. Well, you don't want to spam them, but, you know, Vivifies to get stacks of Cloud of Focus. Keep our Renewing Mist going, of course, and you just keep healing. That's pretty much it. It's just a combination of Renewing Mist, Envelop Mist, Vivify, and using your Thunder Focus T on Vivifies to get stacks of Cloud of Focus. That's the game. That it, Mist Weavers are literally weaving their spells together to make them all work together the last spell that you're gonna have to weave in is manatee so manatee makes it so stacks up to 20 so i'm at 20 stacks right now each stack restores 3000 mana and for each stack you consume it gives you a one second buff that reduces the mana cost on your spells by 50 percent. so i'm going to consume 10 stacks right now i'm going to get a 10 second buff that reduces my my spells by 50 percent for 10 seconds so boom, that's really good. So now you have to weave in your manatees, which is the fun of Mistweaver. There really is no downtime on Mistweaver. So here we go. We've got our new mist out. And by the way, your highest mana cost spell is Envelop Mist. So keep that in mind. It's 12,000 mana for one. It's absolutely crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our new mist out. We're going to get our Zen Sphere out. And the, let's just say there's some damage going out. So what I'll try to do is I'll always try to use a manatee before I use Envelop Mist. So I will just boom, boom. Get Manatee. Again, if damage is going out, it's going to be rough. We're going to Zen Focus T. Vivify. Vivify Enveloping Mist. And that all costs 50% less mana. My Enveloping Mist costs 8400 mana. And I do I use 3% of my mana to do an insane amount of healing. Got a Renewing Mist out. Got our Vivifies out. And that that's the healing rotation. You, you're just weaving. You're just There is no downtime. There, there is absolutely no downtime on Mistweaver when it comes to healing. If you're not healing, you're doing CC, and it's 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 a lot of fun to play. I want to talk about cooldowns real quick because there aren't a lot of them, but you're going to try to rotate. You, you want to rotate these as much as you can. So first off, you have Invoke Yulon, which makes it so you have another HUD, actually, and it puts Chi Cocoons on people with this talent right here. So we get little Chi Cocoons. They're little absorption shields that absorb 109,000 damage, which is actually pretty good. And you press it. I don't think any. It's weird. Chi cocoons don't go on. Are they going on people? Sometimes they don't. Nah. And then you need to use thunder. Fo you need to use enveloping mist to get the enveloping breath hot. This makes it so that the target takes ten percent more healing from you. And it's actually it's a really good hot. So keep that in mind. Yulon, pretty good spell. The Chi cocoon is really nice. I try to use it before CC. That way, there's a little absorption shield and a little heal uh, before I get uh, crowd controlled. Life cocoon is your main. It's your main button that you're going to be pressing use this i use i try to use life cocoon as a last resort and not one of the first cooldowns because it absorbs so much you're going to be using common coalescence which makes it so whenever you soothing mist it increases the absorption shield of your life cocoon which is fantastic and that you know that makes life cocoon heal, absorption and no one's going to burst through life cocoon absorption it's crazy good um you so you want to make sure that you just don't waste your life cocoon it's very very important and then there is our beautiful restore. So restore is really good. You could use it while stunned. That's the most. That's the most important thing is you could use it while stunned, and it works with Peace Weaver. So if t teams are targeting you, or if teams are targeting your teammate, and you're stunned, you could use restore to immune CC on you, immune any magic damage. So you know if if you're stunned and you and you see a chaos bolt from a Destro lock coming in the air or being casted, you could use restore, make your team immune immune to that damage, and it's really really good, very powerful spell. And that's why I like it so much over Revival. Now, the skill cap of Mistweaver is actually in the kiting and your defensiveness. Because Mistweavers are very squishy. We are very, very squishy. So there's a few cooldowns that you're going to want to rotate 
So it makes it really difficult for teams to hit you. The first thing is port, and you, especially with eminence. So you have escape from reality, which makes it so you could port a second time after you after you port. So you port, and then you could you have ten seconds to port again. So that's the main one. And then in between, you have that every other stun DR, which means you have to kind of survive every other go. And then you have dampen harm, diffuse magic, fort brew. Those are your those are your main defensives. I would recommend Fort Brew. It's, it's a six minute cooldown. It could be a four minute cooldown. I run the six minute version. I died through either, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But um, I do I do use Fort Brew. Fort Brew lasts uh, like the longest out of all of them. So you want to use that when you feel like you know teams are kind of stalling at your defensives. You're delaying their go. I would use Fort Brew. Dampen Harm really good versus just hard hitting. You know warriors, Desho locks, anything that has hard hitting spells, damage harm is really good against. And then heal, um, diffuse magic is just really good versus magic damage. So anything with magic damage, even rets, unholy decays, really good against to use against them. Try if you could use it before a stun, it'd be fantastic. But what I try to use these defensives for is I, my mindset is I'm trying to use these defensives to delay their go so that I can have port back because port is like the best offensive in the game. You could port from the another pillar. Right, you could port, and then they could use their mobility to try to get to you with something like Warrior's Leap, and they could just port away, and then you have Ring of Peace as well. And then you also want to learn how to kite, which is just using your Chi Torpedo and your Tiger's Lust to run around the map and stay away from enemies. Just make sure they can't hit you, because Mistweavers are really, really squishy, so you just want to stay as far away from the from them as possible. I did talk about port placement, and almost every time, you, what you want to do is you want to reset and put your port behind a pillar. This helps you avoid CC, avoid damage. The one thing I would mention, though, is if you are being targeted, you want to port from the middle of the map. And I know it sounds weird, but this is what I do when I'm being targeted. I will port, and then I'll port a second time into the middle of the map, and then I'll roll across the arena. That's a very important because this makes it so teams can't really hit you when you have port available, and it buys you time. Because if they try to get to you on the pillar, you could use your ring of peace and your leg sweep to peel for yourself. Um... But just keep that in mind. And then you can reset your port there and just do the same thing over and over again. Try to port from the middle of the map, port behind the pillar, port back, and then just <laughs> roll across the map. As far as macros go, I don't use too many of them. I do use Arena 123 macros with the ping system. That's just, <laughs> it's just what I do. Um, it, they don't work. The pings don't actually help. People still break my crowd control. But I, I use Arena 123, in cap, disarm, all that. Um, I also have this macro is really good for swap between Song of Chi Gi. And Ring of Peace, which is really, really good. I don't have many other... Oh, uh, Taunt Macros. So this taunts specific units. And then I have Arena 1, 2, 3 Macros for kicks. Uh, life Cocoon is... This is a really important macro right here. This makes it so you don't Life Cocoon, you know, anyone that isn't on your team. So someone that's mind-controlled, you, you don't accidentally cocoon yourself. If you're in RBGs, you don't accidentally cocoon yourself when someone dies. So I think that one's really important. I have a pacemen with all of my macros in them. As well so feel free to take them all and then that's pretty much it i don't use anything too crazy for macros i have a statue at cursor stature macro that's pretty much and then i have disarm one two three oh for dispelling i would recommend getting like party one two three dispels or party one two dispels just being a healer you want to be able to really you know have quick dispels so i have those and that's pretty much it oh target of target zen spheres so this makes it so whoever i'm targeting so let's just say my teammate is targeting, you know, this target dummy. This will put a Zen Sphere on the enemy. Because again, when you put Zen Sphere on the enemy, they're taking 10% more damage from your team and temp doing 10% 10 less damage to you. So I'll put, I'll, that's a really good macro. It's really fast. You don't have to swap between targets. You just use that macro and it's really, really good. And that's pretty much it for macros. I don't have anything too crazy as far as macros go. As far as add-ons go, I have an entire video that I'll put in the corner somewhere about my entire ui but i try to not use too many add-ons for pvp a lot of these add-ons are for like pet battles believe it or not but the main ones that i use for arena are omni cd and omni bar are the two big ones so omni cd allows me to track my teammates cooldowns which is what you see next to party frames omni bar is what allows me to track enemy cooldowns so if i test all i have dispels i have burst cooldowns kicks and defensives, which I think is really important. I don't track defensives. I mostly just track interrupts and dispels. And then there's S Arena. So S Arena is my is what I use for my arena frames. I really like it a lot, as well as a very important weak aura that I found that I really, really like. And this weak aura 
is the T's, what's it called? T DR tracker. So this is what allows me to track DRs on my on enemies, on nameplate cooldown, on nameplates, and on my teammates. Really, 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 really good weak aura. Um, it's just on the weak aura website. Oh, then you have nameplate auras and nameplate cooldowns. So nameplate auras is what allows me to see like CC better on nameplates. I think this is just, I used to use fly plate buffs, but it stopped getting updated or it wasn't getting updated and it just kept crashing my game. But I really, really like this add-on. And then nameplate cooldowns is what allows me to see cooldowns underneath nameplates. So this right here, very cool. I try not to add too many spells because I don't want it to be too cluttered. But it, it this, would, this is what helps me just focus on what is in front of me. I don't like to, you know, look down on my bars or like at Omni Bar too often. Otherwise, I'm just going to like lose focus or like lose like where somebody is so i like being able to just look up and look at nameplates and pretty much have all the information there and that is it for me hopefully this was helpful for anyone learning miss weaver new to miss weaver i am more than happy to answer any questions you might have and that's it hope everyone has a fantastic rest of day hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you later